It's YouTube Wednesday! So I'm gonna make a maggot today um, because I need a giant maggot. Recently, I scored a bunch of thick upholstery foam. And instead of sculpting and molding a giant maggot like I normally would, I'm gonna go ahead and just carve them out of this foam. This is a real good foam to work with. And uh, I encourage you guys to try it because even from an upholsterer, it's not uncommon to be able to get scraps this size for free. This is the perfect size for the maggots I want to make. Uh, originally it was a much bigger sheet, of course, and I just cut it down into the basic sizes that I want. After looking up maggots online and looking at a lot of really gross pictures, I have the shape that I want. I'm just gonna trace it out here on the phone. So that right there is it. I have a, a rather round head and I have a segmented body that uh, I'm just gonna cut out. Okay, so that got me a little more than halfway through. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish off that side's cuts. All right, so now that side is a very rough version of the shape I want my maggot to be. Clean as you go. The last thing I want is a big pile of foam here to clean up at the end. When I'm done, I want to be done. I kind of always work on a garbage can nearby. I've got one right here off, off camera. I'm going to carve the bottom first. I now have, this is a very two-dimensional. You can see, I've got the shape I want this way, but the profile this way is still a block. So I'm going to go ahead and 45 all of these, basically, to get this shape better. Again, I'll do that with this blade. I'm just taking this corner, I'm putting my blade through at a 45 degree angle in order to cut off a piece like that. That is one side of it, but he's got a top and a bottom. I'll go ahead and do the other side, and then I'll figure out which one I like the best, and that'll be the top. That'll be the show side, the hero side. Okay, that is all four sides and I am much closer to where I want to be. Now I've got a bit of a steep angle right here. I'm going to go around one more time and knock off all of those edges and do it on the bottom. I also want on this, I also want to make each of these hump just a little bit, just like that, so that these segments seem nice and full and plump. So I'll go ahead and do that first, and that'll mean I have different angles to cut on uh, when I cut this out. Okay, you might have noticed, like I just did, that my blade is slowing down a little bit. It's not as sharp as it was before. So, it's about time to throw it out. This is the same blade I've used to make a couple other things. It's tired, I'm gonna let it go. When you use a dull blade, it can catch itself, and that's when you get cut. So go ahead and retract it, throw it away. I've got a shiny new blade here. This is gonna cut this like butter and make the project be done faster. It's worth it to me to get this done faster and with cleaner lines and not a lot of saw marks uh, for uh, the 70 cents I spent for this at Harbor Freight. Oh yeah, huge difference. All right, so that's the shape I've got now, and I'm getting pretty round and pretty fluid. Now I'm only gonna go where I see this ridge is really pronounced, and I'm gonna knock that down. Okay, looking back at it, I'm refining my shape a bit. I see that's left pretty flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and round that out again. But that didn't take long, and I've got a pretty good maggot shape that I feel nice about. Once I decorate this guy up and do some more detail on him, I think he's gonna look good. And that's a good basic body shape. I'm gonna shape the head because I think the head should actually slant down a little bit more. This is all by eye. I'm just looking at this and uh, removing all the parts that don't look like a maggot. 
If I want to take a little more time and kill all the angles, I definitely want to do that on the head. I'm going to grab a pair of scissors and come right back. I'm going to these high spots now, and I'm just hitting these high ridges and taking the, their top off here. Making sure that's good and round. Got some flat spots on the cheek. Now right now this is all white on white. So I know that you guys can't really see what I'm doing too great. I apologize for that, but uh, nature of filming. Uh, if I was making this for the Smithsonian, I would worry more about details. That's a fine shape right there for a haunted house. I have my uh, soldering iron here, just uh, making sure it's hot. I don't use my hand on that. I actually hold it close to my face uh, just because I don't feel heat very good in my hands anymore. So to know it's hot, I hold it close to my face. I kind of got my cord plugged in right above me here, so I'm working a little bit to avoid that. And I wasn't too worried about cleaning this up because I know I'm going to put all these ridges in it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a few practice ridges. I'm only going to do one side at a time. I have a lot of fans going in here. Uh, you can see that smoke moving away from me here. But the smoke from upholstery foam is even worse than styrofoam. So make sure that when you are doing this, uh, you do have a fan blowing it away from you. I have fans all over the room just working overtime making sure this just goes away. And I'm doing probably a line every half an inch, but because of the thickness of the tool that I'm using, it looks like I'm doing a line every quarter inch. Now I'm not, I'm not afraid of this. I'm going ahead and I'm putting them in a little bit deep. I'm going to go back with those scissors and change the, uh, the starkness of that. You can kind of see that this is pretty stark, but I'll trim that down with scissors. And then it'll be much more like the ridges on an organic creature. Definitely doing a segment where the body parts come together. Doing a line, I should say. And I'm not trying to go all the way around at once. I'd never keep those lines straight. So I'm just doing about a quarter of it at a time, at the most a half. And that way I'm able to keep these lines pretty straight. And then I can just go from the line that I did and I'll finish that all the rest of the way around. Right, like that. That also allows for a little bit of variation and makes it feel just a little more organic. This is looking pretty good here. I'm going to go ahead and knock out uh, the head. Uh, I'm not going to do the head the same way. Instead, I'm going to use the soldering iron to just go over the, the last of the ridges that I have and smooth them out a little bit because this can do it with heat a little more than the, uh, the scissors and stuff can do, because the scissors always leave some kind of residue. I'm just smoothing this out using the big round part of the soldering iron. Okay, that's a lot smoother than it was. I'll work on my angles a bit to make sure I can get all the parts I want to get. There we go. And now I'm going to do, magnets don't really have eyes the same way that we think of eyes, but I am going to do some depressions. I'm just going to do them with the heat. Now make sure they're kind of even. For a maggot's eye, that's plenty. Once I paint this guy, that'll be fine. And now they have a very weird mouth, so I'm going to make some shapes around the mouth. And it's nothing fancy. I'm just going to run and make a hole. And I'm going to leave all these ridges here around this hole. Because it just they have this weird mouth that, frankly, it's kind of gross. But it's very different. And I'm going to carry these uh, lines all the way around the body. time for some paint on him and once he gets some paint uh, he'll just go to get some legs 
because they have these little pokey legs and uh, he'll get his wire frame. Before I get to painting, I actually have to knock down some of these ridges like I talked about with scissors. kind of, again, I'm not doing every single one of them. I'm just doing the ones that are harsh. Figuring out where those are and making them just less harsh. Knock them down a little bit. So this guy now, uh, he is ready for paint. Paint. Um, I say that, but uh, I'm actually going to use markers to do some of the veining on it. Uh, because maggots have, you know, they have some fine veins all over them. And I think that's a, that's a good look. And I'm going to steal a trick from Ed Edmonds. Uh, from distortions. When uh, he does some of his eyeballs, he'll take a red sharpie and he'll go in and he'll paint the eyeball veins with those. If it works, it works. I'm going to use purple and red just to do some simple veining along this, uh, this maggot's body. I'm going to start on the bottom to make sure I like the look that it's giving me. And I do. And I'm letting it bounce off of the foam every now and then. That just makes it look like that vein goes under the skin. You know, that's a little thin spot. That's where his skin's a little thicker or, you know, that membrane uh, doesn't have as much stuff in it in order to give as strong of a signal. I'm gonna go ahead and do red. Always test on the bottom first because that's going to be seen a little bit less. And I'm, I'm not shy with this. I'm not afraid of it. How are you going to mess up a maggot? You know, just throw it on there, man. Uh, if I get in trouble, I can just paint this guy white. Uh, it's a maggot for crying out loud. Don't be afraid of it. my little airbrush here all set up. See, that would take him forever to do. I'm just going to pink him up a little bit, especially in these segments. That was it. It's all the airbrushing I needed. You know I love me some pumpkin teeth. I have some pumpkin teeth here. I'm going to put these guys in as this maggot's little stubby legs. They've got these great ridges on them, so they're gonna stick in here really nice. And that mouth is a little bit weak, so let's put in some pinchers, which are small pumpkin teeth. I now have, I mean, that's his body right there. He doesn't have a slimy coat on him, we're gonna add that, and he needs to get a wire in him, so he's poseable. So this is ceiling hanger wire, it comes in you know, uh, it either comes in a roll or it comes in sticks that are about five, five and a half, maybe six feet long. Uh, normally I buy it in sticks from Home Depot or Lowe's. It's the kind that you hang ceiling uh, tiles with. Uh, but I'm going to use it for a skeleton for this guy. And I'm just going to look at, I'm going to go from, I want to make sure I have head movement. So I put it into his neck a little bit, almost down to his little maggoty snout. And then I go all the way to his tail, and I'm going to add about six inches to that. And then I'm going to cut it off. And I cut with uh, just a pair of pliers or dikes. Uh, the bigger the dikes, the faster it'll go. Easy peasy. And I'm going to cut a little bit of an angle on the tip of this, so I can stab it in there really good. So remember I, I did extra. Well, I'm gonna fold that over onto itself so that I'm actually putting in both ends and I don't have hard wire sticking out anywhere. This will be kind of on the maggot's butt. Buddy, this is gonna hurt you more than it's gonna hurt me. The hardest part is really getting it started. And I think a spinning motion helps.
Anytime you get stuck, give it a spin. Because you don't want it to pop out of the magnet anywhere. Put it all the way in, and you see now I've got this pointy bit here that I'm going to put inside of the magnet as well. That is all you see of that wire. Because uh, the rest of it is buried inside of him. But I can now pose my maggot in action hero poses. So if I wanted to wrap his fat tail around something, no problem. Uh, that's looking pretty maggoty. But he's missing that nice gloss. He's missing that sheen that uh, make maggots so delightfully disgusting. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up some sil clear silicone and naphtha and slather this guy with it. Yes, I'm using naphtha. Uh, I am inside. Like I said, I have a lot of fans going. The garage door is open to give me more ventilation, and I'm moving air through the space I'm working in. If you're going to be spraying naphtha through an airbrush, always use a respirator. I don't care how good your setup is. But right now, I'm just going to be uh, mixing it. So. I'm not as worried about the fumes, but I don't want to get on me as the naphtha itself. Basically, I want to make about a 50-50 mix with naphtha and this clear silicone. This is crystal clear from DAP, and it really is crystal clear. I have a video on silicone and naphtha that you guys can look up, and uh, I use it for all kinds of stuff. But for now, I'm just going to uh, use it to make this guy glossy, and it works excellent for that. I'm gonna have some thick stuff in here and it's gonna be thinned out too. It's gonna to be both. That's okay. The thick stuff, I wanna make sure I pack around these legs uh, to help them stay on. So I'm gonna get myself a little wad here and I'm just gonna take that thick stuff and put it right around the base of that leg. The difference is I am just painting him, but I'm also kind of seam filling around where these legs go in to make sure that they stay on. Now, the thicker stuff here is going to sit on top and make that nice mucusy look. Too thin, it'll soak in. Now, the great part about this mixture is that it's going to be just as glossy when it dries as it is right now. So, this is a uh, nasty, posable maggot that uh, we made out of some upholstery foam.